Hi gang, Scott here. Continuing our march through the Luminar AI editing tools, we've hit the creative group and the first one up is Sky AI. This is our Sky replacement tool, right? So we'll go through a couple of examples in this video so you can see all the different controls in the Sky AI tool, what they do and how they let you refine your Sky replacement. If you're thinking about adding Luminar to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there that can save you a little bit of money. And if you like videos like this, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a beat. Now let's have a look at Sky AI. Let's get the Sky AI tool open up here. And this is a perfect photo for Sky AI. There is not a whole lot happening up in that sky. And we have a really killer lighthouse. You'll recognize this one, the Bass Harbor Lighthouse. Well, let's add in a, uh, you know, a, a nice puffy blue sky kind of clouds because that's what's going on this day. And it kind of makes sense for that to blend in there. So there we go. And already it's looking so much better. But uh, let's run down the various tools that we have in Sky AI so that we can refine and shape the sky replacement. First up, the orientation section. We have a few controls, and let me zoom in, kind of push this over here so we can see what's happening. First is horizon blending. This is kind of controlling the softness at the edge of the horizon. I push this all the way down to zero, and there's what's going on at the horizon. We're kind of just slamming it down, and we, we see gaps, right? We see, we see open spaces there. We could adjust that with the vertical offset if necessary, right? Something like that. Uh, or we can use horizon blending to smooth out that fade and just kind of fine tune. And often you may want to use these things together, right? Depending on your sky. So something something like that feels good. Uh, we have horizontal offset. So uh, let me zoom out for that. So we can shift the sky left or right. And because sky, you know, the images are a certain size. After you push to a certain point, it'll start to enlarge it for you as well, so that it um, you know, stays you know, relatively sane in your photo. And I want to push this over this far because I want to get some clouds behind these trees here. Uh, when we get into the mask refinement, we can see the the effects that those controls have there. Uh, but I do like that uh, it's you know it's kind of kind of giving a little framing to the lighthouse here as well. Uh, we have rotation. We have rotation as well. If you take a photo that is purposely off-center or um, you know, not uh, flat horizon, you've got a uh, rotation to fix that. And of course, flip will take the sky and rotate it around. Like if I, I pull that horizontal back, you'll see there's the same sky. It's just flipped around. But uh, let's return that to where it was, uh, it was right around uh, there-ish. Okay, so that's orientation. Mask refinement, we have global, closed gaps, fixed details. These three sliders are all about getting the seam from the sky to your original photo smooth and clean. Let's, uh, let's zoom into this area here so we can see what's going on. Uh, first we have global, and the defaults are pretty good, but if I, I were to back this down, notice the haloing that's happening here, right? All the way down to nothing. That's not good, right? That's that's very uh, unflattering. But if uh, global itself, if it's something looked a little bit off, you could increase global and have things smooth out even more. On this photo, it's really, um, really not making much of a difference. So the default feels good. But if you see something like this kind of action going on with your blend, take a look at global and smooth that out with global. Close gaps is another one where if you have gaps in the tree line in this case like here this is like more more localized haloing we have closed gaps to deal with that type of stuff and let's just make sure we're not introducing anything bad over in these areas that's all uh, looking good and natural and actually this is a good area to look uh, here for fixed details so fixed details if I push that down to zero uh, it's hard to see because this has actually done a pretty good job already. But if you've got very fine details and you need to maintain those details at the seam of the sky. Actually, you know what? Here's a good example for uh, closed gaps and fixed details. Look at the top of the lighthouse. We have this spire here that's kind of getting cut off. If I put closed gaps to the default, um, still not good. 
I'll turn off sky replacement for just a minute. See that spire reaches all the way up and there's like a little V at the top of it. We want to make sure we keep that so I can keep pushing this closed gaps right up there and it's maintaining that detail for me. And fixed details will make that even crisper because this is a very thin, fine detail. And so fixed details will give me that level of control. And then, of course, you want to just take a look at before and after. Make sure you're not introducing any other strange artifacts. And I'm just kind of watching the edges where the, the sky meets my photo to make sure I didn't introduce anything strange. That's what mask refinement is doing. Scene relighting. We have three controls. Relight Strength, Saturation, and Relight Human. Uh, what these do is change the lighting, the, the, the coloration, the mood of your photo to match the sky replacement that you've chosen. Right? Uh, in this example, with a blue sky, and I had, before I turned this off, I had blue sky in the scene, there's not much relighting having to happen. I might resaturate re here a little bit to bring some of the oranges back from the sunlight. You know, I could push the Relight Strength up, but uh, if I were to choose a different sky just for a moment, like this orange sky, then I would want to play with relighting a lot more because this would be much more of an orange type of scene. Now, the, the, the thing here, the lighting doesn't make any sense with this particular dramatic sunset. The sun is setting behind these rocks. These rocks would not be lit up. So do pay attention to picking an appropriate sky for your photo. Think about the direction of the light when you're doing the sky replacement because as amazing as the tools are, if you choose something with the sun in the background and your foreground is lit from the front or the side, it's not going to make any sense, right? So let me undo those, uh, those changes there, get back to my blue sky. Cool. Uh, last control, relight human. If you have a person in the photo, you're doing an environmental portrait, you can uh, adjust relight human to have the person uh, lit slightly differently. One of my other videos on sky replacements for Luminar AI Update 2 showed this in action with an environmental portrait. So you can go check that one out. I'll put a link in the show notes so you can see that in action. Reflection, I'll come back to that, but we can pay attention just to this corner here, right? Because there is some water here. This is for water reflections. And if we get rid of that, you'll notice that there's some level of reflection actually happen, happening there. Uh, for this photo, I may leave it a little bit um, lower than the default. It's not really pertinent because there's a lot of texture and this is the, you know, the churning ocean. There's not going to be that crystal clear reflection. But once again, if we chose a different sky, let's choose something that's you know, bright and orange. You know, uh, I would expect this to have, you know, some type of orange cast to it. Maybe this one, something that's, uh, maybe, you know, this, this is not going to make any sense at all, a galaxy. Yeah, no, really, it's not really making much of a difference there. But the, the thing to pay attention to is if you do have reflections. I'll show you a different example with reflections. So we'll go back to my blue sky 8. And for this photo, you know, perhaps a small amount these whiter clouds would they be bouncing off a little brighter off of this I'll take it it's uh, it's not going to be um, not gonna be a make or break on this sky replacement and finally we have sky adjustments we can defocus so if you're doing a shallow depth of field you can make the sky soft in this scene doesn't make sense but if you're doing uh, again a shallow depth of field environmental portrait grain you can add grain to your sky so you can see all this grain that's been added up there. That's useful if you are blending and you have a source photo that's either higher noise or for whatever reason it's got grain in it. Like you've treated it with grain elsewhere in a different program or as a, as a different edit in Luminar AI. So you can use grain to get more believable blends. Atmospheric haze, we can either you know, add or remove haze from the scene. And it, it, uh, you'll see that the changes are bouncing around in several places. You're affecting the sky, but then all the other AI kicks in to say, all right, well, I'm doing relighting and I'm making sure my blend is good. So stuff is changing in a variety of places. And last two things, we have warmth, we have brightness, we can brighten or darken or cool the sky to our heart's content. 
So those are all of the controls that are in Sky AI. Uh, let's uh, let's look at the reflection in a little more detail. Uh, there are some things I want you to be aware of with reflection where it's good, it's not always perfect, and there are some things that you'll want to do tweaks and controls for. So in this scene here, I've dropped in my sky, I've done a little tweaking to get the, the blend at the horizon working well, and we have a reflection situation, right? But uh, there's, um, there's some things that are interesting. The only control we have, reflection amount. We can have none, we can push it you know, all the way to 100, and it's, um, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's good, but it's not perfect. There are things you have to consider, things that does this make sense? As I push this re reflection amount around, um, I don't necessarily expect to see reflections in what was churning water for a longer exposure. So I want to dial that down. Uh, I like that I'm getting some into the midground here by pushing the reflection amount up higher. And I also like that there's there's not anything in the foreground. You know, I like that I can see what's going on under here. There's all these cool tide pools, and you know, there's a couple little creatures down there. And the AI is doing a wonderful job in maintaining texture in the water and not just covering it with a reflective sky. Like this part here that's reflecting the, you know, the orange bluffs, it's keeping that, and that's great. So you know, there is some really nice, useful things that this tool is doing for me but it sometimes needs a little bit of extra coaching. And so here, like uh, overall I like this, but this feels a little hot and I wouldn't expect there to be reflections in these areas. Well, we have masking, right? We have a paint mask. We'll take the erase. Let's just get a low opacity brush, you know, maybe a small brush, and just start to erase some of that from maybe the midground there, or this, this is really more the background, just that part where it was right across that wave crest, and maybe a second pass here, just to dial that down a little bit. Bracket key to make that brush a little bigger. And then same thing here, just take off the edge on that reflection there, and maybe a little extra sweep there. So now that's, um, that, it's, that's, it's a nice accent if I want to have that reflection here, it's there. But it's, um, it's toned down, and we have some controls over that. Now, the last thing about sky replacement with reflections, if you have the need for a pristine mirror image in your reflection, you'll need to look at another way to do it. Now, either you can get very detailed with, like in a photo like this, be very detailed work to turn into something like local masking and start adding texture layers to bring in individual skies. And you could take a sky and put it across the top, and you could take a second texture and invert that same sky, decide where you want your cut line and make that perfect mirror image yourself, and then do the masking work so that it's only affecting the reflected areas. For another scene where maybe it's a, a wide lake and there isn't all these like interesting little rocks in between, that might be an easier job to do. But if you have a need for a perfect mirror image, You'll either need to do something like I just described with textures, or you have to look at a different tool that's doing full-on layering to do that kind of blending. Because um, with very distant horizons like this photo here, the reflections are not mirror images. Like this puff of clouds that's up here, let me, uh, let me change my, my cursor from the, the masking area here. Let's turn that off and go back to my tool. This is on pointing. This like cloud that's up here you know, it's not directly at the same spot here. It's like kind of got disappeared into this area. You know, this triangular shaped cloud here, you notice it's stretched a little bit down here. For this scene, it's in the realm of possibility. For scenes where you have more prominent foreground subjects, uh, it tends to work quite well. But for a scene where you have a distant horizon and you're expecting a mirror image, 
you need to look at a different technique to get that uh, really nailed down. And we'll see what uh, what Luminar brings in uh, the next update. Maybe they'll give us some additional controls for squeezing and stretching the reflected part of the sky, and then we'd be able to control it precisely. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping for, uh, for that to show up in a future update. Well, that's going to do it for the Sky AI tool. Hope you found it useful. You got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.